question is from Cam J. Lyons. If you guys took over an average population gym, what are the common problems you would look for to change first? What issues with personnel or equipment would be at the top of your list to fix? Oh, this is great. I know. So, this, this is a fun one for us. Yeah. So, Sal has this dream that one day Mind Pump will actually do this. Oh, yeah. This I think is that, like his ultimate dream. I think it's so fun. <laughs> it would be so fun for us to go in like a restaurant. What do they call it? Restaurant rescue or rescue restaurant? Like those rest those uh, uh, Bar rescue. Bar, yeah. yeah. Where you go in and you turn around a, a you know, failing business or whatever. I would love to walk into a gym and do that for like a month or whatever. Everything's half off. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, no, I, I literally think that we probably would all start, I would, I'm guessing, um, in the same place, which is the personnel side, um, because we used to have a saying. That's in, the culture. Yeah, yeah, in the industry that there's, there's no such thing as uh, bad clubs, just bad leaders or bad managers. And so the, the, the personnel and the culture and the people that run the facility really do make the facility. So, yeah. and uh, people that I would advise in this used to hate to hear this from me. And most people will be scared to do this. So I'm going to say it. And someone's probably needs to hear this, but you're still probably going to be too scared to do it. But I'm telling you right now, you have to, is go in and clean house. And man, that is so hard for people to do. They just, they, they're scared. I'm going to have to get rid of all these people and start over. Like, what am I going to do? It's going to put so much stress on me. But the reality of it is whoever had a hold of that facility before I got there ran things the way they ran things. And if we are going to completely recreate a culture uh, and around the philosophies that I believe that make a successful gym, that I need my people. I need the people that since day one, I've onboarded them and I have, I have taught them how to do things, and I've coached and developed them up. Uh, if I do that, I might go through the growing pains of three to six months of the firing and rehiring and the training and developing. But after that six month time, boy, the job gets way easier versus what I'd done in earlier parts of my career, which was the opposite, which was come into a new place and try and change the way everybody did things. And they were already used to the guy or the girl that was running the place before, that boy was that a battle. So I for sure would start there and start to build my team first. Yeah, the, the two the two people in the gym, the two uh, employees or category of employees that actually, believe it or not, have the biggest impact on the culture of your club are your front desk staff and your trainers. Those are the two people that tend to have the biggest control of the culture uh, in your club. So those are the first places that I look. So when I would take over a club, I would go in and I'd hang out with the front desk on the first day uh, with every single person that showed up. I'd stay at that front desk, I'd meet members and I'd you know, hang out with that front desk person and, and, and start to develop a good relationship with them. I would of course start, I would, I would schedule a big all staff meeting and I'd set up my expectations for everybody. Um, and then I'd spend a lot of time training and developing my trainers because the trainers were the ones on the workout floor. They're the ones everybody sees that's training. They're the ones responsible for maintain, making sure that the dumbbells are off the floor and that they, you know, they're out there all the time. Now the salespeople, the salespeople oftentimes, uh, you would have to, I would have to at least fire because salespeople either want to be there and make it happen, uh, or they don't. Um, and oftentimes that would, I would definitely have to get rid of those people, but you know, it, it's always crazy to me. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, I learned this from uh, one of my mentors years ago. Um, when you walk into a club, you can almost tell, almost to like a, a 100% accuracy, the culture of the club by the front desk. Mm -hmm. You walk in yeah. and that front desk person, the way they check you in, the way they talk to you, the way the energy is up there, that tends to be a reflection of the rest of the club. And to a member, it kind of is. That's the gatekeeper of the facility, but I can't stress this enough. You know, Adam made the point that it's all about the personnel. Look, I've run clubs that were old as fuck. I mean, shitholes. <laughs> yeah, I've run clubs that were they Pools used to, were swamps. They used to be flagships, uh, you know, locations, but they'd been around for twenty years, and the ceiling would fall when it would rain, and I got a pool that doesn't work <laughs> half the time. This is a true story. The heaters on during the I, summer. I yeah. ran, I ran twenty four fitness Sunnyvale. So for you, you guys at twenty four club five oh six. When I took it over, this is before they redid the club. This is one of the older clubs. They still had racquetball. Okay, so racquetball, by this point, nobody was doing it anymore. We had racquetball courts. And the pool was broken, I don't know, 50% of the time. We'd have to put cones around it. 
uh, when it rained, the the ceiling in the in my operations manager office would fall. <laughs> my weights didn't match. I had some plates that were one way and other plates that were another way. The equipment it was one of the old school clubs where they separate everything. So like free weights in this closed off room and machines over here and cardio, which that's a terrible layout. We know that now in gyms. You want everything to be open. And you know that club had a massive goal because some of the best managers in the company had gone through that club. These people at that point were all presidents and vice presidents, and they had gone through. It's kind of like a tra- like a proving ground. And I go in there with this huge goal, and it's like, how do I turn this club in you know into a machine? It's been maxed out. It's old looking. We have competition now. There's gyms up and down the street that are brand new and, and phenomenal looking. How am I going to get a person to want to work out of my gym when the gym down the street is better and costs the same amount of money? And the way I would do it was by the team that I had. Because when people go into a gym, yes, there's equipment in there. But you know who they really show up to see every single time? It's a true story. The people that work there. Yeah, it's like cheers. Bro. Always. Yeah. Oh, a good gym has that kind of environment. And if you want that kind of retention. In fact, I used to, that was part of one of my, my sales pitch when somebody would ask me, well, why would I join here versus Gold's Gym up the street that looks so much better? It's well, because I don't work at Gold's. If you go work out at Gold's, you're not going to see me. But if you come here, you're going to see me. And people love that shit. And it was true. It was a true story. People would come in, they'd see me, and it was a it was a great environment. Was uh, was five oh six Sunnyville your first big box that you manage? That was the first big. So I went from Salinas, yeah, yeah which <laughs> to is like Sunnyvale, small time, right? And then I ran after that. It's I did. probably how funny is that? That's probably what that that developed us that way so quickly because I had five oh five, which is even older, yeah, capital than five oh six, and uh, arguably We're like a year apart, I think, yeah, shittier. Uh, and I had to learn that. That's exactly what we had to figure out. Like uh, nobody, everybody had a nicer gym. Everybody had better equipment. Everybody had better everything, and so. You had to figure out, and you, as uh, you know, I didn't get a, a break on my my revenue targets based off of that. We mm-hmm. had we had a budget, we had to hit it, and it didn't matter if our place was falling apart or not. But you know, some of the things too, like speaking to culture, like what does that mean? What does that look like oh, I'll, in, I'll, in a gym? And I, you know, one of the things that I would love to teach trainers, and when we do some of these uh, seminars, when we we go around uh, to these local gyms and we and we talk to trainers. You know, I I really urge them to uh, make a conscious effort every single day to proactively go on the floor and not put your head down and re-rack, re-rack weights and not pay attention, but to engage with all the people on the floor and help people. And if you got if you can actually lead a place where you've got 5, 10, 15, maybe 20, if it's a big place of trainers and front desk people like Sal saying, and they walk in the door. And the front desk smiles at you, smiles at you, scans you in, says something to you by your, your first name and, and makes you feel good the moment you walk in. Then you go in the locker room and change. You come out, you cross past another, a path, a, past another trainer. Trainer says something to you. Hey, what are you working out today? Oh, good to see you, Mike. And you, you can give that feel to your members. Holy shit! Yeah. I don't care if your squat rack is falling apart, if your pool is green, if your if your urinal is broken. People will forgive you for all those things because you make got to make light of it. Well, look at you guys. Remember when we went to Texas? How much you guys love that gym? That was oh, one of yeah. my favorite gyms ever. Yeah. Been. Oh, it was all kinds dirty, of dirty, dusty, yeah. nothing re-racked. Like, it, but the feel and the vibe, hundred percent, smelled like powerlifter sweat. Hundred percent, was awesome. Here's a, here's a specific thing you can do. This was my this is like one of my calling cards. I would teach my trainers sales training constantly and i would teach my sales guys training constantly so i would have seminars with my sales guys and it was like i'm going to teach you about the human body i'm going to teach you about exercise oh yeah i'm going to teach you about fitness and fat loss and muscle building and that would make them phenomenal sales oh, it gives people. them all new talking points but my trainers they know all that shit yeah. uh, i would teach them sales training and they would exp- they would be amazing because you'd focus on those things that would make them better at their jobs and it was ex- it was always fun and exciting but the culture is everything, and I'll say this this last thing here. The person that creates and leads that culture is the manager. And if you're a manager and you spend a majority of your time in your office, you're not creating a good culture. I knew people like this. They'd sit in their office and do their paperwork and oh, that's, you know, call people in their office. To that and, point, I think mm-hmm. this is so important when you come into a new facility. Um, and this is I spend the first two weeks watching and observing. So the first two weeks, I'm not saying much. I'm just kind of sitting back. I'm letting my staff think that, oh, maybe this is a, a lazy manager who just likes to watch us and doesn't do anything. But all I'm doing is observing who is going to see me like that and 
let off the throttle themselves and who's going to self-regulate and manage themselves. That's who's probably I'm going to keep initially when I cut everybody else. And then after that two weeks is up, then I actually get my ass in gear and show all of them without saying anything that I can do their job better than they can. And that's so important in my opinion, because in the fitness space, in gym culture, there's so much ego and, and I don't care how long you've been training, how fit you are, how many degrees you have. So much ego. So much ego. Yeah, so Every much. fucking trainer, my whole career, okay, 10, 10 years of leading trainers uh, to this day, I'm sure if you were to ask all of them that work for me, all believe they were better than me. And that's okay. That's part of it. That's part of a, a, a being a good leader is, is knowing that you are, you don't need to tell them that or say that and building them up is so important, but they need to see what you're capable of if they're if they're going to respect you as a leader and i think that was one of the biggest mistakes dude, i saw in my peers dude i i my my first week as a fitness manager is 18 years old i'm just a kid right running this club and a 35 year old roided out bodybuilder trainer that worked for me first week he comes in and i'm like hey man you didn't do what i asked you he's like well what are you going to do about it and i said you're fired. And I fired him on the spot. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, this fucking kid just fired me. Yeah, get out of my gym. You're fired.